Texas Senator Kay Bailey Hodgson says if we're serious about fixing our economic problems, it's time to look at cuts in Social Security. She's written to Vice President Biden to get her proposal, which would raise the retirement age, included in a deficit reduction package he's working on with lawmakers from both parties. Senator Hutchinson, welcome. You're one of my favorite senators. Uh, I don't want to get you off balance with that compliment, but it's true. What do we need to do in terms of the biggest entitlement of all, Social Security, to deal with this debt challenge that's just looming over us? Because we have 75 years to look at and 25 years to deal with it, we can make very gradual changes that will not hurt in the big picture and will save Social Security for 75 years, will have no tax increases on anyone, and will not have any cuts in core benefits. I think it is essential that we do this because I don't think we can balance the budget with just discretionary spending when it's such a small part of our budget. You're talking, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, about raising the retirement age to 67 by the year 2019 instead of the planned raise, which is in 2027. So moving that up by eight years. You're also talking about a further uh, moving back of the retirement age to 69 by the year 2027. You're, you're leaving politics, but you are a political person. Uh, what do you think voters who are in that age bracket right now think of that proposal? I think voters realize that if we don't don't do something that's gradual now, it's going to be worse and worse and worse. And in 25 years, the Social Security trustees have said this is over. There will be a 23% cut. That is absolutely wrong for us to sit here and let that happen when we know it's coming and we can do gradual things that will save the system without tax increases and without cutting those core benefits. And that's what I'm trying to do. How do we, look, I'm going to go along with you because I think most people know that we're lucky to be living longer than back when Franklin Roosevelt said 65. Back then, I hate to say it this way, but 65 was probably a good bet for the government. Most guys especially weren't making it past 65. Women were in more, more cases. But what about a guy who drives a big truck, a semi? What about a guy or a woman who has a real tough job, an industrial job, or a really, really strenuous or tedious job that just drives them crazy going to work and why? Not like being a senator or doing what I'm doing or being a lawyer. What do you do for those people? You make them work till they're 69? No, I think that we do have to have some leeway for hard labor type jobs or an airline pilot that has a, a cutoff. Um, and I think what you do is try to adjust the early retirement so that they're not penalized. And I think you're going to have to do that on a case by case basis. Well, how do you do it? Suppose a well, guy think, uh, has a job that, well, driving a truck, you practically have, a, have to have a kidney belt. You have to have a kidney belt. Those are rough road jobs. You go over highways, you're driving huge amounts of time. Uh, you can hurt yourself if you keep doing it too long. I, what do you I say? Do you get, how do you describe this? Where do you draw the I line? Have I think you have to have some leeway uh, that gives a discretion to the Social Security Administration to exempt or allow for the early retirement of people in jobs like that. In ours, we raise the early retirement age to 64. Uh, again, three months a year. That's all we do starting in the year 2016. So we go to 64 for early retirement. That would help a lot for people who uh, have these kinds of jobs, but those are uh, special exceptions. Most people okay. uh, have what you would consider an easy job, mine or yours. Uh, and I think that we can, we can do a lot for reducing the deficits and making the Social Security system good for 75 years, which my plan does. You know what territory you're in right now because uh, you know, you're younger than me, I believe. I'm just pretty sure you are. But let me just go to the facts here. Older people have a lot of time on their hands to think about this stuff. They watch the government policies. They're not just art people or American Associated Retired people, all kinds of older people. They sit around, they talk about it. When they hear that there's a move to cut, to, to raise the retirement age, say they're 59 years old, they got it all planned, or say they're 55. Paula Hawkins was a senator, remember her, Republican from Florida, gone on this issue. Jeremiah Denton, I believe from Alabama, gone on this issue. Remember in 86 when Don Regan, the Treasury Secretary, pulled the rug out from under those folks? You would know that history. What happens to a politician who says raise the retirement age like you're doing? 
Well, first of all, if you're 58 or older, you're not affected at all. This doesn't take effect until 2016. And then it's only three months a year, Chris. And I think that people realize that if we don't do something, we're going to have drastic cuts and big tax increases. And people really don't want that. And of course, people who are um, in the lower levels of age that you and I have missed for a while, 35, 45, um, yeah. they think Social Security is not going to be there at all. And if it is, it's going to be minuscule. Well, that's not fair. They're putting into it. We need to protect them as well as the people in the 58 and above bracket. They'll be completely protected. And then if you're 57, you retire three months later. So what about I mean, Medicare? Do, would you give people Medicare at 65? Well, I'm not dealing with Medicare because but I that think is a, it is more rate. complicated. I well, think let it's me ask you. It's, it's, it's related, though, because if you extend retirement to 67 for purposes of income, wouldn't you have to, re, the people obviously keep working. They'd have to, to keep be, working till 67. Would they get Medicare till they're 67? Well, if they're working, then they will have insurance coverage as they do now, either through the private insurance or their employers or whatever we end up with, yeah. hoping that it's in the private system. Uh, and I think that Medicare does need to be reformed, Chris, but I think the easier one that we could do with very little pain to anyone and a huge gain for our country and for the future right. is Social Security. That's why I'm focused on it. I think we can do a big thing here, but it must be by Partisan and the president must agree that this okay. is essential in the debt ceiling issue debate. You know, I wish you'd run for president, you know, better than that other guy from Texas, but that's just my cup of tea. I think you're a better presidential candidate. You never thought of it, did you? Well, I have two 10 year old children. Um, I had thought about it at one time. I would love to be in the arena. I really would. But there is no way I can do it at this point with my children. And but I'd love to be in this debate because I think we're missing a lot in foreign okay. policy, in the place of America in the world, in our NATO alliance, and most certainly in our economy. I think we need someone with business well, experience and foreign policy experience. And I wish I could do it, but I can't. Well, you're probably a wonderful mother, and it's a loss for us. Thank you that you're not running for president. Thank you, Kate Bailey Hutchinson of Texas. Great to be with you always. I appreciate your show. Uh, well, great. We'll be right back.